What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, I'm taking you for a day out on the water. Uh, should be a good one. I'm gonna be chasing some spotted bass in open, clear water. So it should be fun. Let's go. All right guys, so we got to our first spot. Had to take a little while to get here because the fog is really, really thick. But um, like I said in the intro, we're chasing big spotted bass. Um, clear water, open water. A lot of these fish will be chasing bait in you know, 50 to 100 feet of water. So you gotta keep your eye, head on a swivel, eyes peeled, do your normal fishing. And like I've taught here in the last few videos, you know, have that top water ready to go in case you come across some busting fish that are within distance. So, uh, yeah, here we go. My lineup for today got uh, three finesse baits, finesse setups, got a Largo Shad, a Kitek 2.8 on an underspin and a drop shot and then I have as far as reaction I got the kitchen sink I got an a rig a couple different top waters a couple different crankbaits um, and a spoon a vertical jigging spoon in case we come across some uh, some fish that are stacked up deep so I can drop down and and spoon for them all right here we go guys good morning what's going on What's going on? Well, I hope you guys have a good day at school, okay? Okay. Are you going to go fishing today? I'm already out on the water. Is it cold there? Yeah. It was uh, 37 when I launched. 30, no, 39. Have you caught any? Nope. Yeah, but not for a lack of trying. Well, you guys have a good day at school, okay? I love you. Dad? Yeah, I got you. Uh, sorry. You're on. What's that? Got one. Oh. Morning, guys. <laughs> Big old spotted bass. DT20. It's a fat, healthy fish. <laughs> Thanks, bud. I don't know if it gets much better than talking to your kids, wishing them a good day at school, and setting the hook on a nice, fat spotted bass. Pretty good way to start the morning. That guy right there, DT20. Let's try and catch another. Another nice one. Eating 
that cranky. Morning, bud. Thank you. All right, guys. So what I'm doing? There's a big high spot here. You'll see me keeping look. Uh, I keep looking down at my electronics. There's. It's about a 20 foot, and then it breaks off to like 30, 35. But there's treetops everywhere, and if I'm not looking at my waypoints or my live. I'll end up in the treetops and uh, kind of rotating between the tactical DD and the DT20 depending on how high the tops of the trees are. And I'm trying to just to tick the tops of the trees to get those uh, fish to come out because they're in the trees. Uh, and if I get down too deep, I get hung up, but, um, but they're eating the crank. Let's go. Calm down, calm down, calm down. That 100% was a, a mega live fish. Um, I got a tree out about 40 foot out here. I could see the fish in the tops of it. They came over. You know, one thing that's cool about live forward facing sonar is you see real time how these fish are reacting and I could literally see the fish that were sitting in the treetops come over and investigate the boat and then drop down right below the trolling motor. So I picked up the drop shot, dropped it down. I saw him kind of swim over. Pretty cool. Little guy, but still. <laughs> Thanks, bud. So cool. It's really important when you're on schooling fish, as I'm sitting here talking to the camera, to get back out there while those fish are fired up because they're in that, that feeding mode and they want to eat. I'm just fishing the little... Uh, that's the three inch easy shiner. Just nose rigging it like you would a normal drop shot bait. But with that uh, little swim bait tail on there, you just get a lot more, a lot more action. All right guys, seems like the activity's kind of died here. So I'm gonna go run uh, to the next spot and see if we can catch them there.
nice spot on the spy bait. Can't horse them with this super light line. That'll do. Big ol' spot. And he's all wrapped up in the net. <laughs> the size of this guy. Porker. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Little chubby dude. Thanks, bud. Really pretty fish. <laughs> Thanks, bud. We got it right here. Throwing it on five pound line on a bait caster, a little BFS setup. Nothing like uh, throwing little swim baits and, and spy baits on a bait cast setup. Pretty cool. So, <clears throat> obviously we're off to a great start. Um, stoked with how today has went so far. But now the sun's up, you can see the fog's lifted. Gonna have to make some adjustments, starting with losing this hoodie and this, these sweatpants, but um, it is starting to warm up. Hopefully these fish get more active. I was really hoping for some early morning top water action. Oh, speaking of that, there's a blow up. Um, but uh, it just didn't happen. So hopefully this afternoon um, we'll, uh, we'll get that. But I'm uh, going to change some clothes, maybe change the location. See if we can find some more big spots. Literally taking my sweatpants off. They started blowing up out here. Another nice spot. Almost looks like a cross between a large mouth and a and a spot. Real small mouth, but looks like a large mouth body. <laughs> Thanks, bud.
was literally putting my mask on. Spot came up and slurped my top water bait. Nice spot. Get up here. That is a tank of a spot. <laughs> what size is this one, guys? <laughs> I was literally trying to block out the sun there. Let me spin the boat. was literally adjusting my face mask and uh, I had thrown out for this spot. I've never been here. I'm looking on the, the Lake Master Plus chip map card. Um, it's a flat and right here is where the break is. So I came over to the deepest water or the, the, the break closest to shallow water and I was going to fish these dock lines. That's like a <laughs> That's a fatty. Um, let me get this guy unhooked and back in the water, guys. This hook's got him. <laughs> Super nice fish. Thanks, bud. So again, just picking stuff on the, the card that looks good. So this is a kind of a, a shallower cove flat. And then right out here, my contour lines get really tight, close together, which means there's a, there's a break. So deep water access right there, literally pulled up and casted to the shade. Um, just fish your instincts and uh, sometimes slow down and adjust your clothing. Itty bitty one, you got me. But I saw the the water disturbance behind my my top water bait. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <clears throat> I saw just a little bit of a swirl, so that told me that something was there. Started working the bait a little bit quicker, and then whoosh, got it. No, 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 no. 
Another spy bait fish. Thanks, dude. Nice fat spot. I'm gonna second guess myself using the net next time. Cause that wasn't fun. Big old spot. Burning after my spy bait. I saw five or six fish about five to 10 feet down just to the right of where I casted. And so I was burning my bait in to make a cast to them. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw this thing chasing it up and just paused it and it just choked it. Look at the size of this one. <laughs> Magnum spot. Spy bait. That is awesome. Just got him in the roof of the mouth. Get a picture of this one actually. Putting together a bag. It's an awesome fish. Thanks, bud. I got two. I got two. Oh, he just came off. The second one just came off. <laughs> I had two. They were cartwheeling through the water. I'm going to get back in there. So much fun. Spotted bass are crazy. Thanks, bud.
nice spot. Just bitten up bait. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, bud. I went with a little heavier 3 8 ounce head, something I could get down and work faster. Uh, I missed three fish on that cast and finally that big one ate it. Little fatty. <laughs> that is nasty. Here's what they're eating. Little thread fin. He threw that all. So guys, what I'm doing, you know, earlier they were coming up schooling and you could really, you could see them with your eyes and see, you could see the bait fish flickering and then you'd see the boils and you could lead them with your top water and catch them or your, your underspin or your spy bait. Now I set the live to 120 feet and I have it on the scanning mode. So it's constantly going like this. So I'm looking around and then I can see the fish over here leave come over here to the bait ball i can line up my cast and make the cast it is crazy how accurate you can be with that mega live and then the the target lock you know that turret like i said that scanning feature is such an awesome feature especially offshore when these fish are just swimming all over the place chasing bait it's really nice to scan right, oh, you lose them, scan left, you found them, you know that they're going left and you can lead them sometimes, but uh, what an awesome day, so much fun. I love spotted bass, having a blast. I want to hold you real quick and then I'll let you go, I promise. Don't spit up. Oh, gross. <laughs> so old Skeeter's gonna need a good old pressure washing. Thanks, bud. Oh, look at that. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up there. Uh, had an awesome day out on the water. Beautiful morning. Got the fog coming off, the, you know, the, the water. Um, but anytime you can chase open water spotted bass and be successful, it's a great day. Um, you know, I ran around, checked some areas, was looking for key things. And I think I talked about it earlier, but I was just looking for areas where the bass could kind of corral the bait. So I kind of found this big cove 
and there was a high spot. That's where I started on a high spot. There were some trees there. I could see the fish were in the trees. And I started off uh, with a one-two punch with the crankbait. With that sun really low, I was able to uh, double up either the uh, DT20 or the tactical DD. Uh, I started throwing those depending on if I needed to get down 20 foot or 15 to 18 foot and really tick the tops of those trees. Those fish were suspended in the treetops um, to start out the morning. And then once that sun got up, we got a lot more activity on the surface. Those fish started kind of venturing away and just kind of roaming, chasing those big shad balls. They were eating thread fin about that big. Um, that's why these baits today really worked well. You guys saw I caught a few on this is the duo spy bait. I didn't talk much about the spy bait during uh, the catching, but what's cool about this bait, it's a it's a real finessey hard bait. It just has a real nice shimmy to it. it looks like a dumb, stupid bait fish. Uh, you can count it down. If you have forward facing sonar live, you can see it. You can walk it down and then put it right in those fish's face and it just looks like an easy meal. Uh, Probably the coolest catch of the day today came on that. Uh, I saw a wolf pack of like six or seven big spots off to the right of the boat, and I was burning my bait in to make the cast to it, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw the dark spot coming. I paused it, and that thing just annihilated it. It was like a, I don't know, four pound spot or so, but uh, really, really cool bite. The other cool bite, um, where is it at? This guy right here, you guys know how much I love throwing top water, especially for spotted bass. This guy absolutely got brutalized today. But I was literally, I had ran to a spot, never fished there before, uh, just looked like a good break near a flat where uh, the fish might sit and then ambush from. F made the cast up into the shade line, was fixing my, my face mask, and it just sucked it under. And I reeled down and set, and it was another like four plus pound spot. A really, really nice fish. Caught a ton of fish. Uh, once I saw them busting, if I could drop my rod and pick this up real quick and get on them, I caught a bunch of fish doing that. And then the other all star was this guy right here. This is that three inch Largo shad. I want you guys to know that is the only bait I threw today. I didn't even take another bait out of the package. That Gamagatsu uh, screw on head really holds those baits nicely. Look at all the teeth marks in it. Uh, it doesn't allow that bait to pull off. It holds it really well. And then that Gamakatsu has just a longer arm to clear that bigger belly of the Largo Shad. You know, if you're throwing a cool baits or something like that, sometimes the blade hits the belly and kind of messes up the action. But that guy right there, I was able, that's a 3 8 ounce. The reason I went with a little bit heavier is I wanted to get down to those fish quickly and then put it in their face, um, but caught a bunch on that. The other benefit of throwing this guy versus a, a 2.8 on the uh, cool baits is it eliminated the smaller spotted bass that I was catching earlier. Um, it just allowed me to focus on the bigger fish. I would get bit on it, but those little guys just weren't able to get it in their mouth and it just kind of eliminated those little spotted bass and I was allowed, it allowed me to focus and catch more of the big fish in the school. And then I did catch, catch, uh, what, one? One on this guy right there. Well, 2.8 on the uh, on the cool baits, and then early on, I was able to drop this down on some fish on the drop shot. Um, I saw them follow my bait out from trees, and then I was able to drop it down by the trolling motor and uh, get a few of those fish to actually commit. But guys, all in all, a great day. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along with me for a day of fishing. Uh, hopefully you guys learned some things. If you did, give us a, a thumbs up, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I will link all these baits down below in the video description with the gear, the rods, line, all that stuff. 
But guys, we really appreciate you coming along. Hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys on the next video.